Alright fans, joining me for the Combat Press World Series of Fighting Fight Week podcast is the World Series of Fighting lightweight champion. He is undefeated and undisputed and defending this weekend at Bank of Colorado Arena in Greeley, Colorado. His name is Justin Gaethje. Justin, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good. So I want to get started uh, sort of talking about your journey. So it, it all started pretty much, um, you know, you're... The, the world views you as a top 20 lightweight. I think you're a top 10 lightweight. Last four fights are, are Nick Newell, Melvin Gillard, the catchweight, and Palomino twice. Gillard was the guy that got closest to victory. You guys had a split decision. Um, how have you grown as a fighter from the guy that fought those three gentlemen? How have I grown? Yeah. What's, what's different about you today than that guy? Because I know a lot. Uh, when I fought Mel, or let's see, Nick Newell, um, I was maybe two and a half years into my professional career. You know, now I'm four years in. So, um, you know, the experience is, is huge. Uh, you know, I got a great coach. And, you know, I still feel like, a, you know, a beginner at this sport. So, uh, you know, I'm learning the basics still day by day. Uh, you know, something new, something basic. And uh, the, base, you know, the most important thing. How excited are you, we've talked about this before, but how excited are you that the name uh, after Justin Gaethje verse is not Luis Palomino? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I've definitely, you know, I need a new challenge. Um, this sport is definitely uh, emotional. And, you know, when you fight the same person over and over, it's definitely different type of emotions and diff- kind of different, uh, kind of harder to get, you know, pumped up, especially after I already TKO him twice. It'd be a, really hard to get pumped up, but you could be just as dangerous to third fight. Yeah, and, and, and listen, all due respect to Luis Palomino, I mean, you guys put on two of the best fights in the history of World Series of Fighting, so, but, you know, I, I, like you said at the time, uh, and we'll talk about this here, uh, you were in attendance at World Series of Fighting 25. Um, we talked a little bit before that about how, you know, you're the man of the hour and you're not even fighting. So, what was it like being at World Series of 25? Was it kind of surreal? Yeah, it was good. You know, I had a great seat. Um, I was a little jealous of the guys in the tournament, you know, three times in one night. It, seems, it sounds really fun. It's probably not that fun, but, you know, when I get in that mindset, you know, the mindset of this week, you know, something like that sounds appealing to me. But, yeah, I was definitely glad. I uh, you know, I got to be front row and get a good view. Uh, yeah, you know, good fights. You know, Zephyrino and Paul, you know, both rocked Foster. He hits like a truck, but, you know, Zephyrino's not even if he's ever had a knockout. He's rocking Foster, so I'm definitely planning on putting my hands on him. I know he's only been knocked out once, so I have a, a big goal, and that's to knock him out. All right, let's get right to Brian Foster, then. He's 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 your guy. Um, where do you? I asked him this as well. Where do you stand with him personally? I mean, is there real beef there? Obviously, the whole chill down your spine comment. You guys were jawing a little bit in the when he was in the cage after he knocked out Palomino. So um, where do you stand with him personally? Is there beef? Oh, uh, no, not really. I mean, the only reason I was so mad at the fight is because I had my sister and my girlfriend and my mom sitting next to me, so I really wish you would just be a little bit more respectful in that sense. But, I mean, I'm right by the cage, and he's fighting, so I don't blame him one bit. But, um, no, I mean, nothing personal. I'm actually happy to be fighting him. Um, you know, I think he's aggressive, uh, hits hard, has a great mindset for the fighting. And, uh, you know, I've been waiting for a day for someone to come in there and match my intensity, so I'm hoping that he's the man. You know, it's interesting that the, the World Series of Fighting is, is in a weird spot because they're, they're, they're one of the big three. I mean, that's without a doubt. But, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes to, to, to get promotion uh, excited for some of these fights. I mean, you guys had a good string of cards there, a couple in Phoenix where, where everybody's excited about them. But I got to tell you, Justin, this is the most anticipated fight in my eyes in the history of World Series of Fighting. Do you agree? Absolutely. Um, you know, with my fight style, every single card that I headline will be, it will be that case uh, up to that point. Um, as long as, especially if I got a point like Brian Foster who's getting the fight. So, yeah, I mean, um, that's what I, you know, they, I don't have the gift of gab per se, so I have one way to bring fans to my, uh, on my side, and that's to, to fight my hardest to put it all on the line. And you talked about this a little bit ago, uh, just briefly. Let's touch on it a little bit further. Just when you think of Brian Foster as a fighter, what what do you what comes to mind? Um, experience. And he's had a lot of experience. He's been a uh, Boston's huge name. <laughs> if you look at his record, you know he's 
He's been in there with some of the best, beat some of the best. So um, hasn't been knocked out much. So that's that's what I look at. You know, I really, really want to finish him with the knockout. Do you think that you can employ a similar strategy? Because you and I have talked in the past, uh, and and I'm sure everybody that tells this to you is probably. Uh, blue in the face and telling it to you, but you know you're undefeated, so it, it's hard to tell a guy who's undefeated um, he takes too much damage, he shouldn't leave himself as open because it works. So um, can yeah. you fight Foster the way you fought everyone previous to Foster? Yes, um, you know, it, I mean, I've been I've been cut once, and that was not even on television. You guys have never even seen me be cut before, so I'm obviously not getting hit that hard. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm in a fight, plain and simple, it's a fight. I mean, you have to get hit. Um, but the shots that you do get hit with, you know, those are the, if you're going to eat them, you know, there's different ways to do that. You can't be at the end of the punch. You, it's way better to meet them, you know, halfway to, through their punch. That way they're not getting full extension on their punch. They're not even able to turn their punch over yet by the time they're hitting me because I'm, I'm pretty much meeting it halfway. Um, I'm meeting you with my forehead. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to get hit, it's going to be on the forehead, but I'm not going to get hit on the chin. I'm not going to get hit on the temple. I'm not going to sit there and eat those shots willingly. Um, you know, I haven't got hit on the chin yet. Paul, you know, hit me in the neck. I don't know if you cut my blood off or something. It was something different that I've never felt, but, you know, I can't worry about that. It's a one punch. Everybody has that, and especially Brian. You know, he has that one punch. So I'm not going to go in there and be scared. I'm not scared to get knocked out. I'm not scared to get knocked out. I'm not scared to lose. Um, I am scared to go out there and not perform to the best of, to the best of my ability. So that's all I can control is the preparation and the way I, my output in the fight. And that's the thing. And I, I'm guilty of, of this as anybody. And, and like you said, so sort of talking about that. I mean, you know better than anybody else what kind of punishment you're taking. You know better than anybody else how you're getting hit, where you're getting hit. So, you know, I think that, that one of the things that, and like I said, I'm as guilty as anybody of, of not giving you full credit for having a, a complete idea of what you're dealing with. So, I, I again, you, you, you got, you know, you're the champ and you're undefeated, so who can question it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, the, the, the definition of rolling with the punches, I mean, that's, that, there is something to that. There is a way to roll with the punches. Take, you know, either meet it or, or roll with it. So, you know, that's what I... I feel like I'm good at, and I practice, and, you know, if they are in within striking distance, then I can definitely punch them as well, and so, you know, and I feel like I hit very hard, and uh, if I can time it correctly and punch someone and hit them on the right, in the right spot, they, they're going to go to sleep. Yeah, and, that's, and that seems to be, you know, in, and this is by no means, because I watched the Gallard fight sort of in, in, in preparation, and, and Justin, you're such a different fighter when in the second Palomino fight than in the Gallard fight. I mean, you were and do you think that was a, even a split decision? No, but I, I don't. But, but what I'm saying is just watching you, I mean, you were throwing some haymakers in that fight, and, and you're just a lot cleaner now than you. That, that, I think, is the difference between you and Foster. Foster, because of the experience, his striking may be a, a little cleaner, not that it's drastically cleaner, you know, um, but you got way more power. So I think that is that kind of the path to victory? You want to get him into a dogfight and then just you like your chances? Uh, no, I will prove that my technique is a hell of a lot crisper than his. Oh. Um, you know, when he really just jumps into his punches, the, the the punch he landed on Lou Burley, you know, you cannot say that was technical. That was not pretty. That was nothing but lucky. Uh, you know, and and, and Lou Burley being out of position, that had a lot to do with it. But um, you know, I'm going to stay in position, and I will prove I'm going I'm going to make. My plan is to make him look bad, you know, whether he gets lucky or not and hits me, like I said, I'm not scared of that. But I know that I am better. Uh, on my feet, you know, when I rock him, he's going to try to wrestle, and hopefully I throw a knee wrap in the middle and just take his head off. This is, I, and like I said, I, I can't, I, I wish that I could go knocking on doors, Justin, to talk to you about this fight, because I've talked to the both of you, um, honestly, within minutes. I talked to Brian just not 15 minutes ago. Nice, yeah, hey, I'm... I'm, I know he's confident right now, so that's that's perfect. I, like I said, I, I'm waiting. Every single person in there gets in there and is confident. They've never felt my pressure. He's going to go backwards. Um, you know, I'm going to kick his legs, and he's going to throw that right hand. So we'll see. I, no, but what I'm, what I mean is, and I, I completely don't don't disagree that you that you're looking to do that. What I what I mean is, this is the definition 
of a kill or be killed fight. You guys both have the exact same game plan. You both think you can execute it. In the terms of like, you both think that you're going to knock the other out. And that's, that's amazing. That's an amazing fight to be, to be waiting on. And because a lot of guys say that, and it's an easy thing to say, the, the fact that both of you are willing to get knocked out in the process of knocking the other guy out is what's gonna is really why people need to tune into this fight you guys are plugged in you're both at, at the absolute peaks of your career and uh and you you guys are ready to go um okay T talk to yes, me sir, if you try to make money there's only one way to fight that's true that's so true. i mean look at the numbers um fuck i mean I, i'm getting paid more than fucking misha takers got paid it's fucking ridiculous yeah that's, I mean, that's because you know, and you can't argue with the fact that you put asses in seats, just There's no arguing it. Um, t talk to me about what being a champion means to you. What does that belt mean? Oh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, it, right now it, it does not mean that much to me. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I could care less. That that belt since I got it, the first one I gave to my parents never had that one. The second one has been in the briefcase, sitting in the room. Uh, sitting in my spare bedroom, so you know, I I don't care. I, I want to be the best. I want to fight. I want to get paid. Um, and as long as you know, right now I'm the best in the world series of fighting at lightweight, um, and I'm ready for all challenges. So you know, I'm ready to. Pr I just like to. I'm. I like to show off, man. I like to get in there. I like to show my skills to the world. And I've been working hard. My preparation has been money. So uh, you know, I feel like I'm ready. And I feel like the only chance he has is to get lucky. Do you think that, that the, the way that you view the belt helps you? Do you think that it's because the belt, you know, B.J. Penn wrote a book and he said, you know, he fights, there's a reason why he fights and the belt is just an accessory. Uh, are, do you feel that way? Do you feel like if you start taking the belt too seriously, it, it clouds what you're in this for? Oh, uh, maybe. Or, you know, you know, having the belt means you are the best. Um, you know, I feel like I am the best, but I don't feel like, I have take, put the time into the sport to be the best here. So, you know, I think that if I was to even ponder the fact and, and really buy into the, the notion that I am the best and nobody can touch me, then, you know, you're just being foolish because I'll say it repeatedly, it takes one punch. Um, you know, so I know it sells, sells tickets, but I just don't think I'll ever be willing to take that route. I agree. So, so talk. Say, Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, no, I don't know. Yeah, that's good. So talk, talk to me then about what what do you fight for? What is the thing that, that gets you into the cage, like in your soul? What is it that, that makes you a fighter? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have, I've never experienced another mindset. Uh, from uh, the day that I was four years old, I've been wrestling every year. Um, those are one-on-one -on -one competitions. Those are pretty similar settings to when I walk into that cage, it's a pretty similar thing to walking onto the mat, shaking hands, and the ref blowing the whistle, you know, so I'm, I'm ready for that. I've uh, been getting ready for that since I was four. You know, the part that gets me nervous is, a, is a, the only time I've ever been nervous is when I didn't feel like I prepared properly. Um, so as long as I'm prepared, you know, I am ready for that. I love fighting. I have the best time in the world. You know, I have so much fun. You'll see... If I make it in between rounds, there's probably a smile on my face. You know, I don't even remember the talking in between rounds because I don't remember the whole fight. You know, I don't know what it is, but I'm just, I just love it. I, I love the experience, and, you know, I, I don't know. I have no thought process because I've prepared for it my whole life. Let's talk a little about your team. Like you said, you have a fantastic team. I mean, it, um, Coach Whitman it really is, is taking your – Striking, like I said, I, and this is in no way to to sort of uh, disparage who you were as a striker when you fought Melvin Gillard, but the second Palomino fight, and probably where you're at now. I mean, it's been a little bit since that second Palomino fight. Your striking has yeah, to yeah. Well, the be, first from the first to the second Palomino fight, there was a huge absolutely. Difference. Yeah, it was a huge it was a huge jump between those two fights. So let's talk about your uh, your team in terms of let's just talk about the corner. Who's going to be in your corner? Well, I'm going to have Trevor Whitman, Jake Ramos. Luke Cadillo and then my twin brother Marcus. So, what is each one of those guys brought to your camp, and, and, and how how important are they to you? Uh, you know, um, Trevor obviously. Trevor and Jake are my two striking coaches. You know, and they're, they're the the main reason behind my success right now. Luke is just there for 
because I, you know, I love the guy, and he, uh, you know, helps me keep. You know, I like this. He, his attitude is, is good in the coin in the back, and my brother is just there because I know how much he loves it. Talk to me about the last. So, uh, yeah, they all bring it. They all bring different aspects. I mean, I know I go in there alone, but. Um, you know, it's a good feeling to know that you got people that really care about you in the, in the corner. Especially in between rounds, because, you know, you, you've, uh, nobody's really ever had you get ready to go out, but you've been, you've been rocked. And in between rounds, you know, it's good to have the, those stabilizing forces to say, all right, let's get back to the game plan. Let's, is that kind of, are, are they good at that in the rounds where you've been touched a little bit, sort of refocusing you? Because you always come out of a, a, a round uh, much sharper, even if you've taken damage in the previous round, you come you come out of the corner sharp. Is that is that a testament to uh, to your corner guys? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Um, you know, a lot of fighting. You know, say you say get back to the game plan. I, we don't have a specific game plan. My game plan is to not take a step backwards. When I do get hit, and I if, like I when I got hit against Paul, you know, I took a step backwards, got hit on the neck. You know, um, I should have stayed in the pocket right there. There was no reason to step out of the pocket. So yeah, that just remind me of little things like that. That really, uh, you know, I don't, no, you know, I don't need to retreat. If I'm in the pocket, no one's going to beat me in the clinch. All right, talk to me, and I'll get you out of here on this because this is just something that, that fascinates me. I want to talk a little about the mental part of the of the game, and then sort of just one last thing. So, so for you, mentally, um, how do you sort of, you know, because the fight's on Saturday, how do you get yourself prepared mentally? in the week leading up? Does the weight cut help? Does the, uh, what's the thing that gets you from Justin Gaethje a week prior to the fight to, okay, it's time to go in there and, and take some heads off? You know, I think that started nine weeks ago. Um, this whole camp I've been preparing mentally. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I was, I've been doing this since I was four, man. It does not, it's not hard for me. Uh, like I said, as long as my preparation is there, then I really have no worries because uh, I know that if I, because I am, I know for a fact when I step in that cage that I am going to turn that switch. And if you beat me, then that says, you know, more credit to you. But, um, yeah, that's my mindset. I think that's what's helped me so much so far. Um, it's just really, uh, I don't know. I'm not scared, man. I'm, I'm, I'm actually ready, ready, ready to lose, ready to get people to maybe stop talking about that part of it, but you know it's going to be a hell of a hell of a hard time to to do that. That's that's the thing I think that's most fascinating about you as a fighter is that is that you don't hold on to that oh like it's like it's the like it's the most sacred jewel ever that has existed. You you understand that yes, if I lose like you're prepared to lose in the sense that you could bounce back from it. But you yourself are very aware of the fact that it's going to take a hell of a performance by a hell of a man to make that happen. I think that's an interesting balance. Or a hell balance. of a lucky punch, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, don't you think that's kind of an interesting balance, Justin? It takes a lot of uh, uh, self-awareness and confidence to say, if I lose, I know that guy really, that something really happened in that cage. Not not that, you know, that, that you're... Even if he is better. There's no doubt. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't sense doubt when you say, if I lose, I lose. You know what I mean? No, I mean it wholeheartedly. All right, last thing. Uh, so you're you're uh, you're standing. Uh, you know, I've been to these fights. I've been back in the back with you guys. You're you're standing there. The curtains in front of you. You got about thirty, forty-five seconds before you're about to take that walk. What's going through your head? Let's go. <laughs> play my song. Play my song. Let's go. Let's get this thing rolling. Lock that cage. Uh, ring that bell because once that bell rings, you know I have no thought. No thoughts. You know, maybe I'm a little nervous um, because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not scared to lose, but I would rather, if I do lose, I would rather be because the person's better than me. I don't want to be necessarily, uh, you know, like a, a lucky punch, which, you know, I'm stretching the lucky part, lucky a, you know, a long ways because if they do hit me, then I'd say it's maybe 50% luck, but, you know, obviously they got the power to knock me out, so that's skill. But a lot of this is luck. I'm here. One of the reasons I'm here is because of luck. You know, I play it simple. I'm not going to sit here and say that I, um, you know, I was outright better than every single person that I, 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 I was. But yeah, the luck played a part. You know, I could have eaten a punch 
uh, you know, there's been punches hit me on the shoulders countless, countless times that curve knocked me out. So, yeah, a little, a little bit of it, a lot of it's luck and uh, a lot of it's preparation. 50-50, I'd say. So, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I'm ready. I believe it. Well, you do the work and it shows in the cage. And, uh, and honestly, I've, I've, I, I, I can't keep saying this. I can't say this enough. I've never been more excited about a main event. You and Brian Foster are going to put on an absolute show. It's March 12th, Bank of Colorado Arena, Greeley, Colorado. Justin Gaethje, Brian Foster for the undisputed World Series of Fighting Lightweight Championship. Justin, thanks for the time and good luck this weekend. One question. What do you say? Do you say he's got some beef with me or what? No, he was he was respectful as well. He said, <laughs> you know, you guys kind of, kind of jawed a little bit. And uh, I'll, I'll have the podcast out soon. But, yeah, he was... He was respect. You know Brian. He's a really passionate guy. So um, I, I don't that- know him. That's the thing. I don't know him. No, no. I mean, I, I mean, you, what you have seen. never met him. Really? I think that you know what? I no, think I mean, I only saw him at the at the tournament. And other than that, I, I never met the guy. Yeah, I think you guys would get along. I think that you guys were two people who were put on this earth to ultimately fight each other. I think that if you were born in a. Uh, in, in South Africa, and, and Brian was born in Antarctica. You still would have found a way to fight each other, just because you're just perfect. built to fight each other. You guys are you guys are a perfect matchup. There's no way that this card, this fight, won't be good. So uh, yeah, he was very respectful, oh. and I think he's ready to go just like you. Awesome, good to hear. <laughs> but like I said, I hope he's 100. percent I want him at 100. percent So I'm ready. Yes, sir. I appreciate the time. Absolutely. Have a good one. Good luck this weekend, Justin. Take care. Thank you.